Yo guys, welcome to the video. This is Josh or Milky, and today I want to talk to you about one of the new jewels added in Necropolis League. Now this jewel is absolutely crazy, and I was on Reddit today, as I sometimes am. There's sometimes some stuff to be seen on here, and I saw this thing right here. This is a monstrosity. This is an insane example of the use case for this jewel. But this Pirandus Pact right here gives this gentleman 160 Chaos Res. Now, if you don't know this item, it is a new jewel that has been added that you have to craft using Necropolis Crafting, and it gives other passive skills in the radius of it an additional effect. So you can see the, the, the one shown here grants all the other passives plus two attributes, which could be useful for some builds if you're attribute starved, or maybe you're stacking them, something like that. But there are 13 unique modifiers you can get on this jewel. And you have to craft it using the same methods you would for any other craft with a necropolis. But don't be worried, you might you will be able to do this a lot easier than the other craft. It's a bit less finicky to set up. You just need to block certain modifiers. But we'll get into that in a second. First we'll talk about some use cases. So first of all, it goes without saying, being able to get 160 chaos res from one jewel is absolutely ridiculous. You can solve an entire portion of your build's defense by just slotting in one jewel. If you're a bow character, this looks pretty good to me. Now, this is a competitive jewel slot, of course. This is normally where you want to put maybe a timeless jewel or something like that, but I'm sure you can make do when and dry your eyes with your new 160 Chaos Res. But there are other examples too. My friend Void, who is a member of the Max Roll team, has made a, a General's Cry champion, and he's, and he's given me permission here um, to share his setup for his jewel. So he's got a Parandus packed here, and he's given his passives physical damage, and he's combined it with another jewel the unnatural instinct. Now what this does is any allocated small passives grant nothing, but it grants all the bonuses of any unallocated passives. So this new jewel will apply the plus four chaos res, or in this instance, the plus six physical damage to all of these nodes here, these area of effect nodes, this mana regen node, all these nodes you see right here, will gain that additional effect. And then the unnatural instinct is gonna gobble them all up and you're gonna get all that additional physical damage. So that's amazing, obviously. 228% physical damage from one jewel is a yes from me. Of course, on almost any build, you'd be happy to take some form of that. Uh, even the DD builds want a fire one. My next build, I'm going to be using a similar one to this, this Chaos Resistance one. And I went into the morgue today and I started messing around because I'd obviously been farming a lot of corpses. So I had some necessary to make the uh where is it let's find it this jewel right here and i managed to make mine with corrupted blood and this is actually possible to do for you as well obviously you've got to get somewhat lucky but you can make sure that your item is corrupted and it makes use of a corpse that is somewhat underutilized um and i didn't really think of many ways to use this up until i saw these jewels of course if i can find one obviously this would be the case wouldn't it that i have none in form here we go build coffin item is corrupted 50 percent increased chance for corruption implicit modifiers now there is a base chance when you corrupt an item for it to have an implicit so it's not a coin flip it's not a 50 50 this increases that base chance of getting an implicit modifier by 50 percent and you can obviously stack these on top of each other to get even more effect i've done it today and i crafted eight jewels and I managed to get one with Corrupted Blood. Now, the recipe that I used was based on what I saw from the database. If we look at the tags, you can see that there's attributes, defense, chaos, cold, crit, defense, fire, life, mana, lightning, fits. The only thing with a resistance tag here is chaos resistance. So if we can block every other tag and buff resistance, we give ourselves a damn good chance of getting chaos resistance. And this obviously isn't the only use case. If you want to uh, do it to get maybe attributes, you'd block everything but attributes. If you wanted to get armor or energy shield or evasion, uh, now we're in a bit of trouble because there are three of those. So you're gonna have a one in three chance to get it. So there are some that are much easier to get than others, but you can kind of see that as you go in. If you wanna get something that only has one tag, like this life tag, this is the only one with life, very easy to do. You block all the others, you buff the life, and you're gonna print yourself a nice little jewel. Now the coffins themselves, it's all a bit weird because they have different item levels, but we, they're, they're about in the range of 40 to 50 C looking at this. I don't know why this one's 60 C, but yeah, the, the jewels themselves actually go for a considerable amount. If we take energy shield for an example, this one is being used on some builds, it's going to cost us about three divines. Now, obviously, the Chaos Res one is pretty much guaranteed because you can just buff resistance to the moon and nerf everything else. And then, for whatever reason, this one is even more expensive. You can see four divines, and this one's much more achievable and easy to make. Now, these people didn't corrupt it, so um, I don't know if people know about this, but you can absolutely use that corruption technology that I spoke about 
to do so. Now, I will make a pseudo link. For some reason, for me right now, this is down. So do check the description. But essentially what I did was I used this combination of corpses in the bottom left here. You do not have to do this, all right? Five additional crafts, four adjacents, six columns, and six rows means you will make four jewels. These all have to be the same type, these nine here. That is because the adjacent squares only buff the nodes that they say they buff. So it'll say 40% increased effect of beast corpses adjacent to this corpse. So anything next to this that you want to gain the effect, column doesn't matter because it doesn't get it, has to be a beast. And you'll get to 301% chance to craft an additional item. So you'll print four jewels. You don't have to do it this way. You can print one if you want. You're not going to throw up. You're not pissing money away if you only craft one. And the rest of your graveyard, you want to fill out with the scarce modifiers that we mentioned. Now I will fill this in, check back, Hopefully the website starts working for me again. Right now it's not. I'll make pseudos links for the chaos resistance one. But essentially, if you want the list, here it is. I chose to block each one of these twice. So I'd use two scarce attribute, two scarce defense, two scarce chaos, cold, crit, fire. Uh, I'll write attribute here so it's easier. Life, line in fizz. Then increase resistance. I got to 500%. And then as many of these as possible. As many as possible. Very... The, you want as much chance for that implicit modifier as possible, right? Now, another thing you can do with this, and the last thing I'll say, is if you are doing this corner and they're all the same type, this is a very bog standard way to do any craft. This corner makes it so you craft four times, right? You can use this on pretty much anything. So a little tip you can do as well as that is you can add in a chance for the corpses to not be consumed when exercising. So if you have some space, which you absolutely will with this craft, you're not going to use all these graves, you can throw in a, a lot of chance to not consume your crafts. So use as many of these as you can, make sure it's the same type as whatever you're using for the additional craft, and then you have a chance to not consume these very, very strong, expensive crafts and use them again in the future. Because you can just stick this corner that I've got set up here in basically any craft and always run your graveyard three times. Obviously you lose a lot of slots. You lose, what is it, 315, 21 slots. So you go down to a graveyard side of 68, but you get three more crafts every time. I hope this video helps some of you. I hope you go make some cool jewels and you end up buffing your characters. You get 160 chaos rays, you get 226% fizz damage, you get all kinds of things. If you do, let me know in the comments below um, and I hope this helps you make some cool jewels. Bye-bye. I'm going to get corrupted blood. Any believers? Any believers? Don't harm me, all right? No maim. Overwhelm. None. Oh, shit. I got it, bro. Yo.